What is going on, everybody? Liam here, Everything NYJ, uh, bringing you a quick video on a snowy Tuesday afternoon. If you live here on Long Island, then you saw some snowflakes. And you know where else you can see some snowflakes? On GetUp. Some of the comments are just snowflake-worthy, and this is going to be a rant video. If you guys like these rant videos, I have one brewing for you. This has kind of been bothering me for quite some time now, and I try not to acknowledge the national sports media just because they always have these outlandish takes, these ridiculous takes, and they want podcasters and YouTubers like myself and other ones to react to them. I try not to give them the attention that they crave, but at some point, it's like enough is enough. You know, the Jets bashing is enough. And that seems to be the popular thing. It has been like that for years now. The New York Jets are always the easy punching bag. If you want some clicks, you talk bad about the Jets, and everybody watches in response because we have the most loyal fan base in all of football. And sure enough, they're getting what they want because I am going to now respond to them. Um, starting off, there's a couple, but starting off with Ryan Clark in his comments on GetUp. Um, I'm not going to go through every single thing that Ryan Clark said, but I am going to go through some of his uh, most ridiculous comments, starting with this one. Ryan Clark on GetUp said, Nathaniel Hackett is terrible at decision-making, coaching, managing an offense, and he can't command a locker room, and he can't hold it, uh, he can't hold it in all by himself. So I'm just curious because we did not hire Nathaniel Hackett as head coach. We hired Nathaniel Hackett as an offensive coordinator. Um, we're not asking him to make a ton of decisions. We're asking him to call plays, which I think he can successfully do. He's proved in the past that he can uh, successfully do it. Uh, a great example is Blake Bortles getting a an average to below average quarterback in Blake Bortles to the AFC championship game and making Blake Bortles look like a billion dollars. Um, it's just not only that Nathaniel Hackett has gotten the most out of Aaron Rodgers, making him back to back MVPs in uh, 2020 and 2021. But apparently he can't hold it all in by himself. When did we ask Nathaniel Hackett on the New York Jets to hold it all in by himself? And when did we ever ask Nathaniel Hackett to command a locker room? I'm just curious when that has ever been the offensive coordinator's job. That normally seems like a head coach uh, job. And the New York Jets do seem to play hard for uh, Robert Sawa. Obviously, you could say what you want about the collapse at the end of the season. I do blame a lot of that on coaching. But I think a lot of the, you know, the New York Jets knew that they didn't have the quarterback on their team. Um, the other thing, this is one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorite comments here. This is why we do YouTube. This is why we do podcasts as Jets fans. It's because of comments like this. Ryan Clark telling us Jets fans don't want. I'm going to repeat that. Ryan Clark telling us Jets fans don't want or need Rodgers. How do you know what we want or what we need? Are you a Jets fan, Ryan Clark? Did you sit through suffering for the last 12 years, Ryan Clark? Did you sit through ghosts and butt fumbles and shutouts and blowouts, Rex Ryan burying footballs after Monday, Monday night, just complete blowouts, 45-3? to three? Did you sit through 33-0? Did you sit through Sam Darnold getting mono? Did you sit through Zach Wilson banging his friend's mom or his mom's friend? Have you sat through the suffering that the New York Jets have sat through? And you're going to tell us what the Jets fans want or what we don't want or what we need and what we don't need? You have no idea what it's like to be a Jets fan. That's what's funny about this. I've sat through butt fumbles. I sat through Sam Darnold seeing ghosts. I've sat through Ryan Fitzpatrick choking uh, against the Buffalo Bills with a chance to get into the playoffs. I've sat through this season, the New York Jets losing six in a row to miss the playoffs when you only had to win one of those games. I've sat through Quincy Williams dressing up as the Grinch on a Thursday night primetime football game. Don't tell me what I want. I want a winning quarterback. That's what I want. Aaron Rodgers is a proven winning quarterback. Who's a better quarterback? 
than him that is available. Tom Brady? I don't want Tom Brady. I don't think most Jets fans want Tom Brady. I don't think Woody Johnson wants Tom Brady. Is he a winner? Yes. He's also 46 years old. No thank you. And not only that, he's just uh, he's completely beaten up on the Jets for years now. I just, I, Tom Brady's not coming to the Jets. Don't I won't even listen to Tom Brady coming to the Jets. And then he also says Nathaniel Hackett was a stupid hire. What is a stupid hire about Nathaniel Hackett? He's a proven offensive coordinator, proven play caller. He checks off all of Robert Sala's boxes. He's not a first-time guy. That was the problem with Mike LaFleur. He was a first-time offensive coordinator along with a rookie quarterback and a first-time head coach. Nathaniel Hackett is the adult in the room. Frank Reich is the only guy that I would have taken over Nathaniel Hackett. I mean that. Greg Roman, I considered. Greg Roman also likes to run the ball. He doesn't like to pass the ball. And we have some pretty decent wide receivers on our hands. I think Nathaniel Hackett could get the most out of uh, Garrett Wilson. I think he could utilize and get the most out of Elijah Moore. And whatever you want to do with Corey Davis, if you want to bring in another veteran, I'm hearing, you know, D-Hop, that'd be nice. Or Alan Lazard, if Rodgers could somehow get here. And then he goes on to say, he tell, he goes on and says, Go get the best uh, quarterback and offensive coordinator for your team. Says, if the Jets get a quarterback who's only won one Super Bowl, then you're doing it the wrong way. Because you've only won one Super Bowl? Are you serious? It's hard to win a Super Bowl. That's why Josh Allen doesn't have a Super Bowl. That's why Burrow doesn't have a ring. That's why Herbert doesn't have a ring. Lamar doesn't have a ring. It's hard to win Super Bowls. Tom Brady, he's won seven of them. That's unheard of. That will never be touched again. Some of the greatest quarterbacks of all time have never won a Super Bowl. Dan Marino, one example. Never won a Super Bowl. So getting a guy because he won a Super Bowl is a bad decision? Are you serious? It's a bad decision because Aaron Rodgers went all the way. What is the purpose? Why do we play football? Why do we watch football? It's to win championships. The Super Bowl is the end-all, be-all of the NFL. One of the biggest, if not the biggest event of the year, the Super Bowl. Everybody watches it. People that don't watch football watch the Super Bowl. It's very hard to win multiple Super Bowls. But you know what? When Aaron Rodgers isn't winning a Super Bowl, he's in the playoffs. He's deep in the playoffs, championship games, divisional rounds. He's in it every year. He's competing every year. This year was an exception. But he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. He's playing at an MVP level every single year. Contesting for the Super Bowl every single year. Not one year do we walk in saying the Green Bay Packers, ah, I don't think they're I don't think that they have a chance, you know, even just a chance at going to the playoffs or the Super Bowl. They are competitors every single year. Aaron Rodgers, Hall of Fame quarterback. He has a chance at going to the Super Bowl every single year. So if you're hiring Aaron Rodgers just because he's only won one Super Bowl, let's look at the other quarterbacks that are available. Lamar, he's never gotten past the divisional round. Derek Carr, never won a Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's been to the Super Bowl, never won one. Baker Mayfield, never won a Super Bowl. We can keep going. It's hard to win the Super Bowl. It's it's just uh, – that blew my mind. That was – the stupidest comment I think I've ever heard on national sports TV. Seriously, I've heard some stupid comments, but you can't hire Aaron Rodgers because he won a Super Bowl. So what are we supposed to do? Just stay with Zach Wilson and Mike White? No, you can't do that. You're never going to win with those guys. But Aaron Rodgers, he's only won one Super Bowl, and that was in 2010 against you, Ryan Clark, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we can't do that. It's just, it's it's ridiculous, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then also on Get Up, Chris Canty predicts that Aaron Rodgers will play for the Miami Dolphins, saying that they are a playoff team. That I'll listen, because it's true, the Miami Dolphins are a playoff caliber team. But I think the, Je- I think the Jets are better than them because of the defense. And that's not being a biased Jets fan. It's just the Jets' defense is really freaking good. Really good. They are. They're top five defense. Quentin Williams, Sauce, DJ, JFM, CJ Mosley, Quan Alexander. 
I could go on and on. It's a very good defense, and it's only going to get better. These guys are young. They're hungry. They have a year of NFL experience under their belt. Sauce Gardner is only going to get better. He's probably going to come up with more interceptions next season. Quentin Williams probably going to get more sacks next season. JFM, he's going to continue to go up. And then not to mention, we have guys like Jermaine Johnson the second. We have Michael Clemens. We have Bryce Huff. We have a lot of talent. The safeties, they're a liability. I've been saying that all season long. The safeties are a liability. But anyway, getting back on point here, Chris Cantley. Um, but also, you know, he says that Aaron Rodgers has a better chance at going to the Dolphins because they are a playoff team. But also, the Miami Dolphins do not have a first-round pick. They gave up a lot of compensation to get Tyreek Hill. Cantley also says, the Jets are not used to having nice things. That's why we won't get Aaron Rodgers. Just because the Jets always suck. So we're not going to get Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, you know, it's just... The, the Jets are just so bad. They're in such a bad situation. You know, they were competing for the playoffs. Didn't make it because we didn't have the quarterback on our team. A, a better quarterback on this team makes the Jets a playoff team. You're telling me if Aaron Rodgers wasn't on the Jets this past season, the Jets wouldn't be in the playoffs? Probably making a deep run. I think in the playoffs, we could have beaten Buffalo again. We could probably hang in there with Cincinnati. They beat us during the regular season. We definitely could have hung in there with them. I don't know if we beat them, but we could have hung in there with them. You don't think we could hang in there with Kansas City? It's just like, like seriously. And then jokingly says, enjoy Nathaniel Hackett as your offensive coordinator. It's just when there's no other big news to talk about, clown the Jets. That's that's everybody's go-to. That's always the safety blanket right there. Go for the Jets. You have nothing to talk about, bash the Jets. Now, let me tell you. People are saying Aaron Rodgers, he's 39 years old. You know, you're clowning him. Um, you know, the Jets are just such a bad team, and he's only won one Super Bowl. This past season, 2022, was considered a down year for Aaron Rodgers. Now, mind you, he was playing with less talent, rookies scattered all over the field, and a broken thumb on his, on his throwing arm. He threw for 3,695 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. That would rank fourth highest Jets quarterback in franchise history. Saying that Aaron Rodgers does not make the Jets better is just complete stupid. It's, a, it's an idiotic statement. It's ridiculous. Aaron Rodgers makes the Jets a better team. It's plain and simple. Whether we land him or not, that remains to be seen. Woody Johnson said that he's willing to open up his wallet. Listen, if they don't get Aaron Rodgers... And it's just, you know, he he wants to stay in Green Bay or he's going to retire. Whatever. The Jets have tried. The Jets tried. If you get Aaron Rodgers here and something happens and it doesn't pan out, I'm not going to be mad at Woody Johnson. I'm not going to be mad at Joe Douglas and the Jets. They're trying to win. What are, the, what are they supposed to do? You can't move forward with Zach Wilson. You like Mike White? I love Mike White. However, he's not a starting NFL quarterback. I don't trust Mike White through 17 games. I don't trust him to stay healthy. And I just don't trust some of his decision making. Is he fun to watch? Absolutely. Can he beat up on lesser teams? Absolutely. He has guts. He's a warrior. He has heart and soul. He leaves everything he has on that field. But you know what? There's 32 NFL teams and there's not even 32 NFL starting quarterbacks. It's nice when you catch lightning in a bottle. But how sustainable is it? How, you can't continue to move forward with Zach Wilson and Mike White. A lot of teams don't have a starting quarterback on their roster. When you can go out and get an MVP-style quarterback, an MVP-type quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, you have to pull that trigger if you want to be competitive. We're, we're in the AFC. It's hard to win in the AFC. Buffalo, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Chargers. That, that's just to name a few top – that's just to name a few teams off the top of my head. You put Aaron Rodgers in the AFC, you're competing. You are 100% competing. And at that point, I think you have a real chance at winning the division with Aaron Rodgers as your starting quarterback. The Bills seem like they're coming back down. They're probably not going to be the same team that they have been. Um, and not only that, I don't really worry about the Bills in the playoffs. Even if they do make the playoffs, they historically, they choke. You get Aaron Rodgers with tons of experience and knowledge. That boosts everything around you, everybody. The wide receivers are going to uh, get more yards. Everything is going to flourish more. 
you you have to beef up your offensive line. I understand. But you're telling me that Aaron Rodgers can't beat the Miami Dolphins, especially with our defense, and we're not going to be trailing in these games. We're going to be able to score points. Aaron Rodgers, 26 touchdown passes. He could get you in the end zone. That was a huge problem. Zach Wilson, Mike White, they couldn't get us in the end zones. We were settling for field goals. Look at that Minnesota game with Mike White. Look at the Jacksonville game, excuse me, with Zach Wilson and Strevler. We went four games without scoring a single touchdown. Four games, not one time in the end zone. That's ridiculous for the 2023 NFL. It's a pass-first league. It's an offensive-heavy league. How can you not get into the end zone? I'm not afraid of the New England Patriots, really, really either way, but especially with Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers could beat the Bills. We can make a playoff run. Hell, we could even get into the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers, and that's not being an unrealistic, biased Jets fan. If I was an outsider looking in, they have some talent. Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Brees Hall. We have some quality tight ends for the first time in forever. We have that stacked defense. It's just some of these takes. It's it, it's mind-boggling. It really is. And like I said, not, not not to repeat myself, not to sound like a broken record, I try not to listen to these national media headlines. I would much rather listen to a Jake Asman or a Buffalo Jet or Let's Talk Jets Radio or Jets Central. There's plenty of really good just – Jets fans talking just regular football, just fans like you and I. We don't get paid millions of dollars to sit here and and spew out a a narrative. We just call what we see. It's that simple. What do you guys think? Am I being a little too hard on Ryan Clark and get up? Or do you guys think that these comments are just absolutely ridiculous from Ryan Clark, from Chris Canty? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Um, We'll talk Jets soon. Thank you for watching all of our videos for our podcasts. Um, we have uh, Boy Green coming on tomorrow. Yesterday, we had Nick Bodkins co- uh, come on. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the support. Talk to you soon.